All right, guys. Um, like I said, if you guys watch the other video, I'm gonna show you guys my BIOS settings. And if you haven't watched the other video, um, it should be a video response in the bottom to this video. Um, well, first of all, before you do anything, if you want to follow my overclocking tutorial for 4.8 gigahertz, make sure you have the latest BIOS at this time in filming. At that date, I have the latest BIOS version 1.7. This is an MSI GD55 motherboard, um, Z77 using a 2500k uh, so yeah I'm going to show you guys what we got to do first of all go into eco and um, disable everything I mean pretty much disable everything but if you want leave EUP 2013 on that basically means um, like if you enable it it'll turn off the USB ports on your computer um, but if you disable it, I mean, um, it'll leave them on even though your computer's off. So I just enabled it because I don't see me using them while it's off because my computer's mostly on anyway. Alright, next you want to go into the OC. This is using Click BIOS 2. Um, Alright, so first of all, these are what my settings look like. Uh, 1000 on the base clock, on the, the CPU ratio is 48 which is uh, 100 times 48 which equals 4.8 gigahertz um, not every CPU will be able to be running at these kind of specifications I got a lucky one because I'm running under 1.4 volts at 4.8 gigahertz which is pretty good compared to what I've seen other people run um, disable the just CPU ratio internal PLO voltage EIST enhanced turbo disable all of that um, and you you really never want to enable like no matter what you're doing don't ever enable PLL over voltage you'll pretty much fry your chip like you won't fry it unless you know what you're really doing like but your chip will degrade much faster so I mean try doing whatever possible to be running it disabled because unless you have another CPU on the side or you're running like like world record overclocks like 4.8 gigahertz anything like past 4.6 is not noticeable anymore like you really don't notice it after that point in games and anything but I mean I can run 4.8 and no temps are fine and everything using a Cooler Master V6 GT so then I set my OC Genie to default I don't have it enabled don't turn it on whatever you do um, the DRAM frequency is on auto and I have XMP enabled so just enable XMP and if your memory doesn't have XMP just um, run just what it's rated for um, sped spectrum sped speed spread spectrum yeah that's what it is disable and CPU V droop which is basically um, so it, it doesn't drop the voltage when you get load on it um, just put it on a hundred percent because you don't want your voltage to drop when you're getting load because it will cause instability so it's basically like um, what do they call it? I think it's called LLC load line calibration that's what they, it basically is so a digital compensation level you want to put that on high because anything over 4.6 you kinda want to go high on that and CPU core o, over OCP expander I put it on enhanced and CPU core switching frequency auto and then the CPU core voltage is going to be different for everyone but I personally am running 1.395 volts which is slightly under 1.4 volts and it's stable but some people might have to go 1.4 just depends on your CPU and some people might actually have to do less um, my CPU IO voltage is auto, DRAM voltage is auto, GPU voltage is auto and then system agent voltage is auto all of those are auto until um, some people might have to change the CPU PLL voltage I mean I tried lowering it because some people say when you lower it it gets stable but I actually lost stability when I lowered it auto is basically 1.8 volts which is safe like there's no problem with that but I wouldn't go anything over 1.8 um, some people might be able to get away with 1.75 and some people just run like 1.7 like I don't it just my CPU likes it on auto and yeah um, that's pretty much it for this section and now I can show you my CPU specification
So that's right there. That's what yours should look like too. If you're running a 2500K, this is what it should look like. If you have a 2600K or a 2700K or some, an i7 with hyper-threading, um, I recommend you to keep do whatever you can to leave um, hyper-threading enabled. But in some games like Battlefield 3, it causes a glitch. So it just depends on what you want. But this is a 2500K and there's no hyper-threading. And I prefer not to have any fake cores anyway. So now I'm going to go into CPU features. Um, active processors all limit CPU ID maximum disabled execute disabled bit enabled Intel virtualization enabled power technology custom and then I have disabled 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 and then the secondary plane current limit is basically your integrated GPU but I don't use that so I don't touch that and the prime plane is basically your processor and I didn't have to touch that so yeah I guess I'll get back to you when I'm done like um, booting up and into the system and prove that it's stable at 4.8 and showing you guys a CPU-Z that will be in the description. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll put the second part of the video like after this. I'll be right back, guys. Alright, guys, I'm back. And I've been running the CPU for 40 minutes. Um, Prime 95 blend test. And no crash at 4.8 gigahertz. That's to prove it's stable. And I have, if you go through my videos, I have the same setup doing a, um, a Cinebench, and it got a score of over 7.5. I think I'm not, I don't remember too well, but it was pretty high for a 2500K. And yeah, so that's what it is. And my temperatures have not gone over 71. I just saw 71, and I've never seen 72. So yeah, those are my max temperatures for over half an hour. It's been exactly 40 minutes of prime. Um, blend. And 71 is perfectly fine when it comes to temperatures. And I've been running tests um, since 11.06, and right now 11.47, so it's over 40 minutes. I'm going to stop the test. And then my CPU fan just dropped down, and the load went down. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Um, and in conclusion, I would want to say that the Cooler Master V6 GT is a great cooler and um, if you know what you're doing and you get lucky you should be able to get your 2500k to 4.8 gigahertz um, with good temperatures um, thanks guys for watching and please subscribe